Hello there, welcome back to Speaking Spurs with me, Kieran, talking all things Tottenham. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to support the video with a like and post comments below. Um, today's video is about Steve Hitchin. Uh, obviously, you will have known, unless you've been living under a rock by now, he has quit Spurs. Um, for those of you that didn't know who he was, uh, behind the scenes, he's had a few different roles since he's been with Tottenham. He also left Tottenham at one point, then came back. He has resigned and is being targeted by Everton in a director of football role. Um, he's essentially tired of his reduced role at Spurs. For the last two transfer windows since Paratici's been in, he's kind of had to take a bit more of a back seat than he's used to. And I think he just wants more of a challenge. He's used to be the driving force behind deals, identifying players and, and such. So, you know... Um, He's lasted longer than any other recruitment specialist since Daniel Levy has been at the club. Um, you know, he's come after people such as Frank Arneson, Damian Camoli, Franco Baldini and Paul Mitchell, who was the person that he succeeded. Um, before Paratici was in, although it wasn't his official title, he was basically our director of football, kind of like chief scout, if you will. Um, He's had a really good relationship with many people around the club, which we'll go into more detail after. But he spent most of the last six months in a completely um, different role, overseeing things like the club's medical support science and analysis departments. Um, he's been blamed for a lot of transfer activity over the years. But let's just talk about a few that he could have had over the line. So... He negotiated deals for Bruno Fernandes, who obviously went to Manchester United, Paulo Dybala, who we've been linked with many, many times since that deal was first spoken about, Jack Grealish, and James Ward-Prowse, somebody that was never really spoken about before. Um, only for Spurs to back out of all of these deals because of financial issues. So, he is a man that was known for scouting um, and has worked his way up from there over the years. These are big players. Um, so instead of Bruno Fernandes, we ended up signing Giovanni Lo Celso. Uh, Bruno Fernandes is a player that Pochettino wanted um, and then Lo Celso was the second choice. That's what we ended up with. Um, Jack Grealish, we could have had several times and uh, didn't. We all know how that went. Lots of frustration. I think we've even spoken about it on this channel in the past. Back in the day when I started the channel, um, James Ward-Prowse would have been a great player. And Paolo Dybala is, is a very, very good striking talent who we are linked with in every single window. Now, when these deals don't get over the line, many people are quick to jump the gun and have blamed Steve Hitchin. And when the Spurs documentary was aired and he said that he didn't like the transfer window, um, the clever thing about editing when you're filming is that you can make especially in reality TV, you can make people sound like they've said something that they haven't. Although that was the comment that was spoken, that's not entirely what he meant. Um, he, wasn't, he wasn't a scout or, or director of football or whatever you wanted to call him that disliked the transfer window. Um, I think a lot of them disliked the January transfer window, especially when you need players in certain positions because it's a difficult window to get right. Clubs don't want to sell. They overprice players. It's not that he doesn't like transfer windows. I'm sure he loves it in the summer when everything's cheaper. So I, I feel like he, re he received a lot, of, a lot of flack that he didn't deserve because of Daniel Levy. So he'd gone out, negotiated these deals to happen for only Daniel Levy to turn around and go, whoa, I'm not paying that. And that's what kind of kept us behind the pack. But Daniel Levy didn't get all the blame. It was Steve Hitchin and Daniel Levy. So let's talk about it, right? He sent all the Tottenham staff a heartfelt email on Wednesday explaining his decision uh, to resign as the, the club's technical performance director. That's the position that he was given officially. So he's only 45 years old now. He asked uh, Daniel Levy <clears throat> on Tuesday to release him from his contract after the five years he spent at the club which is 10 years in total because he had the previous spell as a scout. The request was granted. I believe Hitchin and Daniel Levy are actually very close friends. Um, 
so he's not going to want to hinder him, um, not going to want to fall out over this, especially when Paratici's in. And Hitchin had become kind of a a secondary figure to Paratici and he was just being given jobs that he didn't really want to do in and around the club. So, um, yeah, he's now begun gardening leave with both Everton and Newcastle are believed to be showing an interest to bring him in to head up their new projects. Obviously, they both want to stay up. Um, I think he may want to wait until the end of the season before he makes a decision because I don't think he's going to want to head up a project in the championship. And I don't think both of these teams will go down. Um, but staff within Spurs have, uh, have told that Hitchin sent the heartfelt email to them all on Wednesday explaining uh, the reasons that he's decided to resign, to seek new challenges after the last five years. I mean, five years is a long time to be at the club. Um, he, in the email, praised staff behind the scenes who have kept the club going through the highs and the lows. And we've had a lot of lows recently and spoken of his honour at working with some of the world's best managers during the past half of a decade. So I'm assuming what he's really talking about there is uh, Pochettino and Mourinho. He reserved thanks for Daniel Levy for giving him the chance. And he really did. He let him step right up in the game from just being a scout. Um, and the understanding that Daniel Levy had to allow him to seek new opportunities. Apparently, he's been considering in, uh, considering, in? considering his future since basically Paratici came in. Um, and it was an unexpected move. And what made it stranger was Daniel Levy had said in interviews uh, that he'd been trying to bring Paratici in for some years. So that would have been more of a, a shock to Hitchin. Um, so that was a bit of an unexpected move at the time. Hitchin obviously wasn't too happy about it, a bit disgruntled about it. Um, although Hitchin and Paratici are believed to be friends. So the arrival of Paratici changed his role, um, who had grown from chief scout to be seen as the club's director of football without the name. Uh, before officially being given the name of Technical Performance Director in 2020. Um, so that made him take more of a backseat after Paratici came in. He was focusing on, um, as I said earlier, scouting, analysis and sports science. So he's, he's not really there to broker the deals and hash and thrash things out to get these people over the line. He didn't have much involvement in the last two transfer windows and he actually took two weeks off this month in order to make a final decision over his future um, and then that resulted in the meeting with Daniel Levy when he returned. He was quite a popular figure at Hotspur Way not just with the staff around the training ground but the players as well. Um, he was a close ally to all of the managers and head coaches that he's worked with um, drawing public and private praise from them behind the scenes. Conte quickly grew close to him um, and that's expect, expected to be reflected in the press conference if he's asked any questions uh, leading into the Brighton game and I'm sure there will be I haven't seen anything yet but I mean whilst he was working as head of recruitment Hitchin helped broker deals for people like Luka Modric when he went over to Liverpool he helped bring in Luis Suarez you know so if he's backed he can bring in these players. And this is why I feel like he's had way too much blame in recent seasons. You know, Luka Modric was a fantastic player for us. Obviously moved on because he had ambition and wanted to go to Chelsea, ended up at Real Madrid. But what a player. Luis Suarez at Liverpool. Bearing in mind, he was... Luis Suarez was a guy that had a decent reputation in the league he was in. No one believed he could cut it in the Premier League. Hitchin brings him across. Massive, massive success. Um, so yeah, that's just, you know, two players there we're talking about. He also was, what, uh, what was one of the other, Benoit Asuakoto. He had a massive, massive hand in bringing him into the club. I loved Asuakoto. I don't know about you. He used to scare the pants off of me every time he tried a risky turn inside our own box. But oh my, I, I loved watching him play. Such an exciting player. Had you on the edge of your seat, panicking in delight and sometimes terror. But yeah, that was, I just thought I'd point out that player there. Um, so he had spells at Spurs and Liverpool. Um, but since he come back, 
been caught between a rock and a hard place during the most recent five-year period of the club. It's been a very difficult time. Managers not being backed, him not being backed financially, the stadium move, coronavirus, then the bringing in a Paratici. He's had a lot to deal with. The documentary was shocking in my eyes. It was one of the worst things we ever did. But, you know, his role was always to provide the managers with the players that they wanted, uh, whilst also negotiating deals for the scouting department's top targets. And all of them then had to get the green light from both the manager and finally Daniel Levy. And this is the stumbling point, Daniel Levy getting the final say. Pochettino, um, who we know was not a big fan of having sporting directors alongside a head coach. He wanted to be the manager. He wanted to take control himself. However, he was very close with Hitchin himself um, when he arrived in 2017. And that was following Paul Mitchell. And Paul Mitchell actually worked with Pochettino at Southampton. So he'd been used to working um, with somebody involved in transfers, just would prefer to do it his way because then he's always going to get the players he wants. Um, but that didn't happen, so he ended up having a very good relationship with, with Hitchin. Um, he was tasked with bringing in the players for Pochettino, um, and then Levy would either sign off or not sign off. So um, two of the players that he brought in in Pochettino's tenure were uh, the record signings of Tangi and Dombele and Giovanni Lo Celso. Both were pushed by Pochettino, um, Obviously, Tangi on Dombele was our number one target. And recently, Pochettino's actually tried to sign him for PSG. So it's a player that he, he really wanted and has wanted him again. Lo Celso was our second choice. Obviously, we wanted Bruno Fernandes first. Hitchin actually got a deal lined up only for Levy to buckle at fees, which is why we then ended up going for Lo Celso. And even that wasn't a straight deal. That was a loan. And then we purchased him. Um... So there you go. That says everything. That's not hitching. He lined up the right deal. When he couldn't get that, he then got the second choice player. But, you know, summer 2020 brought similar players signed for a manager. So Mourinho um, was actually delighted with his with the arrivals that Hitchin got in. Hoybier, very good player. He's done a good job for us. Sergio Reguilón from uh, Real Madrid. You know, he's been exciting bar his injuries. Doherty was somebody at the time that it looked like would be a very good player. I, me I remember we were all excited when we knew we were getting him from Wolves because we'd seen what he could do in a Wolves shirt. We can't blame Hitchin for the way Doherty has then played when he's come to the club and he's been played out of position. And Hitchin was also involved with Daniel Levy to bring Gareth Bale back to the club on loan. And let's face it, when on the pitch, that loan was a great success. And that's Hitchin. Um... In the first window um, under Mourinho's tenure, Hitchin had kept an eye and pushed for the signing of Steven Bergvine. That one was him. Um, he had an immediate impact, didn't he, with his uh, goal against Manchester City. So that proved right there and then that he'd signed a decent player, a young player. We've seen what Bergvine can do when fit, played in the right position with confidence, most recently against Leicester. He also had a pretty good game against Chelsea. I think he's been very unlucky in his time at Spurs, in and out the side, not given enough of an opportunity. I mean, it doesn't help that Sonny plays predominantly in the position where we want Bergvine. But we've seen Bergvine can also do a defensive job under Mourinho. Um, and then fans got on his back because he wasn't contributing enough going forward. But that wasn't the role he was asked to do. Um, but, you know, Mourinho complimented Hitchin for, the, for getting Bergvine over the line. Even Mourinho said he wasn't my first choice. I'm always very honest about that. But it turned out to be a great decision. And I think we can all see now. Yes, Stephen is a player of a bright future ahead of him. He can handle the right and left. We're very happy with him, not only because of his age, but also because of his professional attitude, the way he trains, the way he lives. He's a boy who can only get better. There you go. Um, the other sign in that window was Jedson Fernandez on loan. Um, but that's believed to have been pushed by Mourinho and the player's agent, George Mendes. Uh, and we know George Mendes very well. His name came up a lot when Mourinho was there, when... Um, how is his name gone out of my head? Um, oh, God, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter. His name's gone out of my head. Um, but George Mendes is a driving force. You know, he's one of the biggest agents in world football uh, and... You know, Hitchens' hands were probably tied. Levy was trying to keep Mourinho happy, is what it is. Um, but in all of the transfer windows, Hitchin would also also negotiate deals at the advanced stages 
for the heavily scouted players. Um, some of them never got over the finish line, which I've mentioned. Bruno Fernandes, Jack Grealish, uh, Paolo Dybala um, of some of the big examples. Um, there were mistakes by Hitchin, like we can't get over it. Um, he was the one that, I mean, Pochettino liked the idea of Indombele, um, but Hitchin was the one that really, really pushed it. Um, that was his top choice of 2019 in the summer. Um, he thought that Pochettino could help the gifted Frenchman develop on and off the pitch, even though there was lots of questions of those around him about his, you know, his desire, his application, the consistency in the past. We've been pre-warned that there was a possibility his attitude would stop him from developing at Spurs, and that has. So that is one that he got wrong, and it was a record signing. But had that gone right, we'd all be sitting here saying the guy's a genius. Uh, and then Serge Aurier was the other one that Hitchin apparently pushed for. Um, and we know about his attitude and stuff like that. But there were glimpses of Aurier where he's fantastic. Unfortunately, the majority of the time, he just wasn't. And he was, what, 23 million from PSG in 2017. Didn't find the consistency we wanted. And, you know, we actually agreed to let him leave on a free. So that one cost us quite heavily. Um, Although the Indombele one, it looks like if if he does get signed back to Leon, it's not going to cost us too much. Um, but he's had some good successes. Lucas Moura, you know, another PSG player that he acquired the signing of. Massive moments at the club. Without him and his goals, we never would have beat Ajax in the Champions League semi-final. That took us to the final. Um, he got the couple of goals against Manchester United in 2018, where you know, Pochettino come out and said, I want to say to our chief scout, Steve Hitchin and all the people that worked with him because they advised me to sign him. So Pochettino wasn't actually going to go in for Lucas Moura. Hitchin was the one that urged him to. Um, and he also said, when people sometimes criticise because it is tough now, I think I need to say well done because today's performance from Lucas Moura, from the people that advised and feel responsible to, they need to be praised too. That is why I want to congratulate them. There are always people who are working behind and it was a fantastic job because today I think Lucas deserves a lot of credit. You know, so there's there's been some some great signings in there. Uh, he helped sign players that, that gave us the opportunity to play that free-flowing attack in football. Um, but as you know, outside of the club, the fan base were affected because of the all or nothing documentary in Mourinho's first season at the club. And it was, um, the, co the comment actually was, the January window is the worst window. It's a window of opportunity, opportunity, it's a window of panic. It's never a window to plan. I hate it. He added, I work on the metrics of what Jose gives us for uh, what a Jose player is in each position, working on the parameters of finance that the club gives to us. Tottenham is a is a very fortunate is in a very fortunate position now, where the profile of the club has increased so much, and it's nice to know that the players you can attract now is miles away from where they were five years ago. The club has been in a position probably uh, for twelve months, taking away the Champions League, where we know we've had to rebuild the team. We just feel this is a time for some players to move on and to bring some new blood in. But those three words, I hate it, just circled social media and people were like upset. It was just all misconstrued. Um, but who knows? Who knows what the future brings? And my point is here, a lot of whether Hitching can take a lot of blame will depend on the success of Paratici. And what I mean by that is if Paratici doesn't succeed, it's purely because Daniel Levy hasn't backed him. Now, if he does back him and succeeds, then we can turn around and say maybe Hitchin did get a raw deal. Maybe he wasn't believed in enough. If he'd have had the back in, where could we be now? But we need to remember in Hitchin's time at Spurs, those, you know, those years after he came back in, we reached a Champions League final. We had one of the best squads we have ever, ever had. Entertaining football, free-flowing attacking, Kane and Ali partnership, Son and Kane partnership, high press and intensity football, a young, young squad, which unfortunately over time had got a bit too old and maybe we held on nostalgically too long to some of those players. So I think, although Hitchin made a few hiccups along the way, 
We need to remember all the great players that he helped bring into the club that built us the success. So I guess what I'm saying in a way is thank you, Steve Hitchin, for the job that you did in your time at Spurs. Um, and I hope after listening to this video, a few of you maybe see him in a little bit of a different light and can understand how social media and certainly the editors of the um, All or Nothing documentary um, from Amazon Prime really made him out to be some sort of useless and rubbish guy. You know, th this guy, what is it like? So he, ca he came into the club. Um, he After he ended his career, he wanted to be a talent scout. And it was at Tottenham where he started in the mid-2000s as a part-time European scout. You know, to then bring in Luka Modric, massive. He, he only moved to Liverpool in the end with Damian Camoli. Um, you know, who was once the director of football at Spurs. So after Liverpool, he then went to... He was head of European scouting for Queen's Park Rangers... And in 2016, joint director of recruitment at Derby County. And then we brought him back in um, once he'd had all that experience at these other clubs. So Daniel Levy obviously believed in him. And it seems like he still kind of believed in him, but just wanted to bring in Paratici because Juventus have been right at the top. So I can understand why Daniel Levy's done it. And I can understand why Hitchin wanted to leave. But I, I genuinely hope that this video has helped you see things in a different light. And from the perspective of myself, who maybe gets a bit more detail brought my way than what is is put out in the regular press so i hope you enjoyed the video today we are going to talk a little bit about transfers tomorrow because even though one window has just ended of course we're already talking about the summer transfer window and there are one two three four players to talk about so thanks for sticking around for that one hope you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe to the channel support the video with a like and post your comments below and we will talk again soon so until then Stay safe and come on you Spurs.